In this podcast, I'd like to cover the very powerful concept of equivalent circuit elements. The basic idea here is that if you have some combination of circuit elements, maybe two resistors, as I've shown you here in the classic series combination, wired one after the other, the idea would be, can I find some way to take this combination of resistors, and in particular the effect that it has on the rest of the circuit, and remove that combination from the circuit, and replace it with something simpler, which has precisely the same effects on the external circuit as this original combination did. If I can do that, then I can make my life a lot easier by going through a circuit, finding particular combinations of elements that I can then replace with simpler or uh, combinations perhaps that even have fewer elements in them, consistently then reducing the complexity of this circuit as I replace things with their equivalents until I get down to a very simple circuit that I then can analyze without too much difficulty. So that's the overall plan. Now to carry that plan off, we need to understand some of the basics of how a circuit element interacts with the rest of a circuit. If you think about it, a circuit element has terminals. Those are the endpoints of the element, like this resistor R2 has these two points, right? And then how it interacts with the rest of the circuit, which is what we're trying to mimic, is that some current from the external circuit could flow through that device, and there may be certain voltages across the edges of that device, or the terminals, which are the, literally the endpoints of the device, those points with which the rest of the circuit interacts. And at those terminals, then, we typically have two things. We have currents coming in and out. So there are terminal currents that we have to consider. There are terminal voltages, which then interact with the other voltages in the circuit. And finally, each device has its own characteristic equation, which relates the voltage across the various terminals to the currents across the various ter uh, among the various terminals. And it's precisely this, this relate, mathematical relationship which defines and distinguishes one type of device from another. So the plan then is to remove this combination of two things, replace it by some um, mystery element. So the idea, I'm going to take this combination here, right? I'm going to remove it from the circuit. And then between these two points, B and A, I'm going to try to find something here. We're not going to specify yet what it is. But whatever it is, we want it to be such that the current and voltage characteristics of those two terminals, A and B, are precisely the same as this original combination. Now, thinking in terms of how things look to the outside world, whatever this mystery thing is, it's going to have some amount of current I that flows into it and some amount of current I flowing out. The other key characteristic, since this corresponds to point B and this corresponds to point A, the other key characteristic we need to consider is the voltage difference between points B and A, V, B, A. And if I can get this thing to have the same voltage for a given current as my original combination does, well, then I've done my job. I have the same characteristic equation for the same set of currents and voltages. I will have found an equivalent with which I can replace the original combination. Now, mathematically, our task then is to figure out what this voltage is in terms of the current coming in, and then figure out what, to, uh, what, to, what type of circuit element that would correspond to. So we want to compute VBA. In my longer notation, remember, I use an arrow to remind me that's the voltage, the potential difference in going from A to point B, from here to here. And we know we can break that up into a series of steps. So that would be the voltage difference in going from A to point C, where point C is this point between the two resistors, plus the voltage going then from C to my final destination, B. In terms of the voltage from A to C, going from A to C, notice I'm swimming upstream here against the current. If the current is flowing down, that means the potential must be lower at the bottom, higher at the top. So this is an increase in potential. So it's going to be plus. 
we know that the current flowing into any point has to be the current flowing out. So therefore, we must have this current I that flows into resistor R1 must also be flowing in resistor R2 and then coming back out to the outside world. So there's a current I flows through the resistor R2. So VCA, we use the characteristic relation for that resistor. That's I times R2. V from C to B, very similarly, I'm swimming upstream now in R1, which experiences a current I. So that's plus I R1. Mathematically now, we can factor out I. So that's I times R1 plus R2. And notice that that is precisely the type of voltage current characteristic equation that we're used to for a resistor. Plus I times some resistance, which I will call REQ. So the form of this equation tells us that the equivalent circuit element must be a resistor. So I'm going to sketch it in there now with some resistance REQ. And by looking at the equation itself, we can see exactly what resistance we would need. It would have to be clearly the sum R1 plus R2. If we do that then, we will be able to reproduce the behavior of this combination and simplify our circuit down and remove one resistor. Very good. So that's the classic series combination and the replacement that you would make. If we think about the analysis that we did for the series case, we see we use two key facts about uh, uh, elements wired in series. The first basic fact is that both of the components in the series, they share something. They share the same external current right? It's equal for both of them, and it's just the current coming in from the outside world. The voltages that they had, though, weren't equal to one another, but they did add together to give me the final external voltage. So they share I external, and their voltages add to give the external voltage. The complementary type of wiring would be called a parallel circuit or a parallel combination. And this is different in a precisely complementary way. As we shall see, rather than sharing the external current and having the both elements having that same external current, we're going to see that a parallel combination shares where both elements have precisely the same voltage across them, namely the external voltage. Similarly, we're going to find that their currents add together to the total. So they add together to get the I external. So it's a sharing versus adding. The wiring that would go with that is as follows. If we have our points here A and B, again B, and down here say A, if I want both to have the external voltage VAB, both have to have their terminals on those two points. So I would have here R1 and here R2, wired like so. And I think you can see that if I have an external current flowing in and out of this system, where I would define the system that I'm going to hopefully find an equivalent for as this part here. The current flowing into this node, by Kirchhoff's rule, the current in is equal to the current out, right? So this current coming into this junction, I, must split into two pieces, I1 and I2, in such a way that the total current I, the external current, has to consist of the sum of the two internal currents, which, as we promised, is precisely complementary to the series combination. As far as the voltages go, again, uh, we can get from A to B in two different ways, around the left side or up the right side. In either case, what we're going to find is that the, um, let's see here, where should I find some space for this? 
uh, V BA, I can get it either going up this resistor against the current is plus I1 R1 or it's equal to plus I2 R2. Solving now for I, it's I1 plus I2. I1 is VBA divided by R1. So that would be VBA times R1 inverse. That's I1. For I2, a similar story I can solve here. I2 is VBA over R2 or plus VBA times R2 inverse. <clears throat> now I can factor out V like I had factored out I. So that is the external potential times the sum of the inverses of the two resistances. And now finally I can solve for the voltage in terms of the current to get into sort of my standard form. And my VBA then would be I divided by the sum. <coughs> or I times the reciprocal of the sum, R1 inverse plus R2 inverse, all inversed. And what I hope you will see is notice this again just looks like I times some equivalent resistance. So once again, I could replace this series, this parallel combination with a simple single resistor of an equivalent resistance. But now the equivalent resistance is a somewhat more complicated formula now that we are in the parallel case. Namely, we see that the equivalent resistance now is the R1 inverse plus R2 inverse, the whole quantity inversed. And then again, we've complicated accomplished our goal where we could now replace two resistors and have precisely the same uh, functional circuit by removing them and replacing them with this single resistor with this equivalent parallel resistance, thereby reducing the complexity of our circuit by one resistor. And you will find in many complicated circuits, not all, that by going through and finding all the series and replacing them with their equivalents, and then going and doing all the parallels and their equivalents, which might, by the way, release some more possible combinations of series, and alternating back and forth, you sometimes can get yourself all the way down to a single resistor and a circuit that's very easy to analyze. Okay, with that then, I think I'm going to end the discussion in this podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs>